Hello and welcome to this. Welcome to this evening taste challenge. Not a dawn busters, but it's dusk. Um, we have two American blended whiskeys. This is Bellows, William Bellows and Company. American blended whiskey. Now, last night on uh, Thunder and Thursday, I did Bellows Club whiskey, which I don't think is still produced, but I could be wrong because, you know, these companies put stuff out and they don't list on their website. Now, they do talk about this on the Luxco website. Web site. Luxco bought the Bellows line from the Bean Company years ago. And um, Bellows, wa Bellows, like so many, was an independent company. It was a I don't think they were ever a distiller or a winery, a vintner. I think they were simply a wine broker. They had wines that they bought and sold under their name. And they had liquors that they bought and sold under their name, like um, gin, what, gin, blended whiskey, straight bourbon, rum, and so on. And uh, actually, they never made any claims that they were a distiller. If you look at their old advertisements, they simply say, basically, they're saying, we source this and we pick good stuff and we sell it to you for an economy price. It's always been kind of like Paps with beer economy. Nothing wrong with that. It's still around, right? This, I mean, I bought this in uh, Jefferson Parish. So, Louisiana. Now this liter bottle was six ninety nine. Okay, no age statement, which means it's aged at least four years. So that's the law in America and Scotland and Canada. It's three years, but in the United States of America, if there's no age statement on a liquor, it has to be aged at least on a whiskey. I, I don't know about other. It has to be aged at least four years, whether it's blended, straight, whatever. Four years. So that's in the in a barrel for years. A new, newly charred, never before used barrel. Barrel? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, they utilize barrels again and again and again and again. Okay, so these barrels might be used for decades, uh, which is not a problem. Scotch, Canadian whiskey, rum. So many things come from used barrels. Uh, um. But bourbon, straight bourbon, has to be in a never before, you know, has to be a new barrel, never before used barrel. But uh, oh well, these are not bourbons. They're blended whiskey. Kentucky Bow is the competitor. Kentucky whiskey, a blend bottled by Kentucky Bow Distilling Company, Bardstown, Kentucky. Well, that's um, actually Heaven Hill. I assume Heaven Hill introduced Kentucky Bow back in 1950. I don't know. I did find that's the first time the trademark was ever used. There's double horseshoes and some medallions that don't mean anything. Um, I bought this for $6.49 plus tax at Bonita Liquor Store in uh, Meridian, Mississippi on Mississippi Highway 19, so Bonita Plaza Liquor Store. Mississippi Highway 19, northbound, right off of Interstate 59 slash Interstate 80. Easy to get to. Okay. Well, relatively easy. It's kind of hard turning left because a lot of traffic and it's a long light. If you turn right, it's nothing to it okay. if you're going north. But anyway, uh, um, $6.99 for a liter. 649 for a 750. So already Bellows wins just by price. But we're going to taste them. And, and do I think uh, it's going to be a big difference? I don't really think so. And if it's not a big difference, then Bellows wins. But I don't know what I mean is I don't know what the normal price, the normal price is. Because I doubt too many places in your, I, I doubt where you live, wherever you're viewing from, I doubt where you live, you can get a liter of whiskey for six ninety nine. It's a strange price here. I mean, 
I cannot get that price in this town where I live. I have never seen such a price in the town where I live, in this parish. It is not common. For a liter, you're going to normally pay about, for this kind of product, I would say at least $12, $13. That's if you're lucky. But I bought that at, at Savannah Discount, and it was $6.99. Not a typical price. I've never seen Kentucky Boy in Louisiana. Now, it doesn't mean it's not sold here. I just said I've never seen it because we get some odd things turning up. Um, would a used barrel give you this deep of a color? I don't. Dr. Frosty Bruce says, cheers. Clinking the mugs. Ron loved the Kiss Stream. I, I thought the Kiss Stream would be popular. I'm going to do a second highlights. I don't know if I'll do a third. But um, I hear Jerry out there cutting the grass. All right. His yard and his grass wasn't really high, but he's picky about it. Um, maybe too picky, but it doesn't matter. Hey, I'm not complaining if somebody keeps their yard trimmed and uh, it's his gas money. I wish some other people in this neighborhood were picky like him. Uh, but uh, anyway, luckily it's not too many like that. Cheapest stuff we got around here is Old Thompson. I think it's still more like more than six ninety nine. Says crispy bacon. Old Thompson. That's I've heard of that brand. And I've seen photos on the internet, but I've never had it. Where do you live? If you don't mind saying. Okay. No, it wouldn't be this dark. This is like a chestnut color, right? They were asking me about doing Fandango Friday tonight. I told them I can't do it tonight. I can't do it any night this week, this month. <laughs> I can't do from Fandango Friday at all this month. That's why we're going to have to do Thunder and Thursday. It's just no way I can do it. Uh, but uh, those things happen sometimes. Blame it on college baseball. <laughs> Kiss Love Gun, a good song. Yeah, I thought Love Gun, the album was good, but it was when they kind of were starting to slip a little bit. To me, it shows a decline. It's not a great decline. But two years later, you knew. Okay. Greetings, Ron, says Ronnie S. Hey, greetings to you. Uh, so, thanks for watching, y'all. No, they add caramel color to these. They're not going to be that rich of a chestnut color in a used barrel. When you put the bourbon in a, in a new barrel, the bourbon is clear, clear like vodka. Well, it really is what it is, like grain vodka. And they'll add, um, don't have to, but they can add wheat, rye, other products, other grains. It has to be at least 51% corn. It could be 100% corn. That doesn't matter. But it's clear. Like I said, like vodka. Uh, but the newly charred oak gives it that color. But it's like a tea bag. You keep using it. What happens? It doesn't really impart much to the water. And that's what happens to these. These are in used barrels. So if you didn't add any color, they would be yellow. These would be yellow, not chestnut. So what do they do? Will they add caramel color? <laughs> happy Fandango. Yeah, happy Friday, I guess. Um, we had to cancel. Well, I knew, I knew, I knew two months ago we we're going to do Fandango Friday tonight. Um, is caramel color a common food coloring? Yeah, probably the most common food coloring. This one smells like. Um, I posted the duo review of Kentucky Bow this morning. David and I sitting in the backyard doing it doing the review and will i ever do a solo i don't guess it's necessary i mean this is not a product that needs to be just continually covered i mean i could do a solo review but nothing's going to change all we said was or it was ordinary we didn't say it was bad we hated it or anything like that powerful power powerful johnny tactical powerful up uh, so 
this doesn't smell bad. It just smells like basic. A basic product. I paid six forty nine plus tax, and it smells like that. Old Thompson. Uh, I'd like to find that. Crispy. It says, Loves Park, Illinois. It was one of the first whiskeys I had. A little rough. Haven't had it in a long time. Yeah, Old Thompson. That's a Sazerac brand these days, I think. Used to be an independent company, you know, like so many. But Sazerac, I think, sells Old Thompson. They sell Philadelphia whiskey, which is no longer made in Philadelphia. It was. But it's just the whiskey industry has consolidated so much. This smells like corn. Do I get any barrel on it? A little. Any wood? Yeah. The yeah char not. Um. Yeah, I suppose there's a there's a shadow of char. Um. It there's like a sour mash. I don't think it's sour mash whiskey uh, being mixed in with this, but um, smells like it. But it could be Heaven Hill, that green label it might be, you know, the Heaven Hill straight bourbon and green label might be sour mash whiskey. I don't, we don't get it here. So we only get the Heaven Hill blended. It's called, it's called Quality House now. Like, uh, like at the beginning of this year, I think it was the beginning of 2020, 2020 it just abruptly became Heaven Hill Quality House Kentucky blended whiskey. It used to just be called Heaven Hill Kentucky blended whiskey. Uh, it smells all right. If you like corn, I mean, you say, well, I like corn liquor. Well, you might like this. Let's go to the smell over here, the aroma. They are, they are kind of complex, as, you know, as low grade as they are. You can't really just talk dog on them. Like um, we do beer reviews and we'll talk about smells like this, smells like that, tastes like this, tastes like that. The body's like this, the finish is like that. These can be done that way. Hey, Ron, good to see you, brother, says Thomas uh, Siltz. Good to see you, or at least see your name, and I uh, appreciate you watching. I appreciate, appreciate everybody watching. This smells uh, a little less corny, a little more woody, and a little more bourbony, meaning like more char, more like vanilla from the oak. Yeah, I bet you this is the Bellows. Bellows, I'm not going to sit here and talk about how highfalutin bellows is because it ain't but it's not it seems like it's a little better grade maybe happy friday jay says jojo currently enjoying a miller genuine draft okay that sounds like a good choice we can't get it in this town <laughs> uh and uh we can't get these two whiskeys in this town i drank a dos equis ambar when I got home from work, drinking Brew Dog East Coast Crush Session IPA, 4.8% delicious, says Joe Biden's dentures. Another one we can't get. All right, taste challenge. It's not a talk challenge. So let's go on with the taste challenge. I know I know this is Kentucky Bow, and I know that's Bellows, but have you ever had a black tooth? Is that some kind of drink? Okay. Um, <clears throat> had a black velvet. I got black velvet, black velvet reserve. Not too thrilled with those. Those are like my two least can favorite Canadian whiskeys. Maybe the Gibsons. Oh, I got some people so angry. No, I never had that. They were so angry, like, you're crazy. That That's one of the best Canadian whiskeys. And I said, I'm not crazy. That's just what I think about it. All right. I'm sorry that I gave an honest assessment and I thought it wasn't that good. I mean, that's what the whole channel is about. Get it? I try stuff and I give you an honest evaluation. It doesn't mean we're going to agree. Okay. You might find my ideas about it outrageous. I'm sorry. I want, it's not about, let me frame it so I can get more support. That wouldn't be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. I wouldn't do it anyway. Will Ron pass the taste challenge? Crown Royal with a splash of Coke. 
Oh, I got a bottle of Crown Royal coming up. And guess what? I bought the big handle bottle, the big glass with the handle on it. Oh, yeah, because it was the best deal. It was the best price per ounce. I mean, it was way cheaper per ounce buying that. So I was like, I'm getting there. I'm getting it. I'm going to be dealing with this for years. Anyway, Crown Royal is the most famous Canadian whiskey. Why not buy a big, big one, right? Then you could just drink on it, taste on it for who knows how long. Fighting Cock Whiskey, try it. Oh, yeah, that's from a. Uh, it's from Heaven Hill, actually. I would. I've seen it. I can get that. I can get a lot of Heaven Hill stuff, but I got to go into the city. Like Joe Walsh, I got to go into the city. All right. Um, so corn, no wood, really. A little, little char, a little just muted. Like the flavor is muted. It's like a whiskey muted. Not bad. Like you can't say it's rough. It's kind of smooth. Uh, if you watch David and I's duo review, we're not talking about it's rough, it's nasty, it's abrasive, it's harsh, nothing like that. We just said it's bland or average. It's dull. It's ordinary. That was the key word we use, ordinary. Well, $6.49 a bottle, is it a real tragedy to get an ordinary whiskey? No, I think it's a big benefit. You know, it's like, ain't bad. You think it sells. I mean, it's on the shelf there at that Bonita Plaza liquor store, and I'm, they probably buying it all the time. Now they're buying it for their daughter's wedding, you know, or some big funeral repast. Uh, you know, they're not. They're just buying it to drink with Coke. I'm seven up. I don't know. I had me some Jack Daniels. It was a green label. It had a sourness to it. I would prefer the original Jack. Now you've come out with a interesting, a few interesting ones. I have not tried them yet, says Crispy. Yeah, I see that so much. There's so many pre premier Jack Daniels. Yeah, the green label. I have a bottle of that left. It's all right to me. It's, it's a cast off. They tell you that on their website. The green label is what they bottle when it doesn't come out right. but then I'll go waste it. <laughs> All right. This one over here, you get a little more vanilla and a little more wood. I think it's a little better. I like the bellows from the first day I tried it. I like bellows ever since Arnold Rothstein fixed the World Series in 1919. <laughs> Heard you had a little trouble. Gentleman Jack is good. I've never, I had a little one ounce taste of it, but it doesn't, you know, it's worthless taste. Gentleman Jack, if I ever buy it, that's an interesting way they make it. It's like double tea bag. It's like making tea. That's the Jack Daniels. And then you use the tea bag again and you make the Gentleman Jack. True story. Just like Canadian Mist. Canadian Mist is sort of like the Canadian version of Gentleman Jack. But it was introduced a long time ago in 1967, I think. You say, well, Canadian mist is so dull. Yeah, it's created to be dull. That's a fact. They, they designed Canadian mist so that it would have a very bland, dull, watery taste, but still be 40% alcohol. They probably did some big time research and they found out that a lot of drinkers don't want a harsh flavor. <laughs> they might call it mellow. You know, you'll say dull, it's bland. We, I would say that too. But a lot of people say it's so mellow and smooth. Okay. Is it a big seller? Yeah, Canadian Mist, like one of the top five Canadian whiskeys in the world, I think. So why do you think millions of people every day drink Canadian Mist? Because they hate it? You think they go to the store and buy it and say, oh, I hate this stuff. Let me buy another bottle. Pretty sure they don't. I'm doing these, they, these 
I'm trying to get those days knocked out where I know I can't do examinations. And it's working so far. I'm now tomorrow morning I gotta pivot back to straight bourbon. What happened? I forgot. I knew I was gonna forget. I just knew it because I had it in the other cabinet. Because the bottle's too big, it won't fit in the cabinet I have. It's the Stedman Select straight bourbon whiskey, Kentucky bourbon whiskey. 86 proof. Ooh, 86 proof, not 80. It's age only three years. So it's young, relatively young, but it's powerful, you know, kind of powerful 86 proof. And I'm going to put it up against the Jim Beam repeal batch, which is four years or more, but really probably four. No age statement, but you know, about four. Um, non chill filtered. That could be an extremely challenging taste challenge tomorrow morning. But if there's any difficulty in telling them apart, then the Stedman Select automatically wins. That's how fast it's going to win. Why is that? I can buy a whole handle bottle. Well, it doesn't have a handle on it, but a huge glass bottle, 1,750 milliliters at Walmart. $19.95, or it might be $19.96. <sighs> it might have dropped. The price might have actually dropped to $19.55 or something. But it's a huge bottle, and you're never going to get Jim Beam repeal batch, peel batch for that price. So it, it's going to win by default if there's any question on it. I would say Stedman Select is a good deal. I think it's mostly at Walmart. Can you buy it at other liquor stores? Yes, but those are probably in controlled states where the government controls it. And maybe Walmart releases it to those liquor stores under an agreement to get some kickback. Um, I was really impressed with Stedman Select, tell you the truth. <laughs> um, Okay, let's see. I'm going to try to do this challenging. And I can't see without my glass. I can, but I don't want to get so close to the screen. Say it ain't so, Joe. It is. I wish I could find some American whiskey in upstate New York for 6 to $7 a liter. Yeah, says Thomas Silts. I don't think you will, but River Edge Total Wine, New York, Jack Daniels, 200 milliliter Gentleman Jack bottle. I don't know which, what are you saying? I've heard good things about the Gentleman Jack. I will have to try what is the alcohol content. I don't understand that comment. Okay. Um, Kentucky Bow. There's almost like a strange metallic thing going on. You know it doesn't have that, but it's so weird. Um, would I ever buy it again? I'm not crazy. You know, I'm not going to buy it again. I tried it. You know, what can I say? I tried it. Would I recommend it? I wouldn't recommend it unless you just want to try something. Like, you're like me. You say, I got to try it. That way I can tell everybody I tried that. <laughs> That's kind of like the only purpose. Okay. Now, when I bought it, did I think it was going to be really good? No. Sure didn't. Is it about what I thought it was going to be? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I think that Bellows bottle was from like last year or 2018. It's pretty new. They're both new bottles. They're not old. Neither one of these are old. You can, If you look at a bottle carefully, you can kind of tell when it was bottled. Kind of, You can kind of figure out a bottling date. Okay, I'm going to say this is the Bellows. Well, I'm going to know because when I lift it up, if it says KB, I'm going to know I'm wrong because that's Kentucky Boat. Oh, how you feel, played? Oh, man. I only had one defeat so far with Kentucky Boat, and I crashed and burned just now. Oh, man. My girl has got me hooked on Bird Dog Peach Whiskey. And she makes some homemade tea with Lipton. This good stuff. Ah, uh, yes, Bird Dog. I could have bought a whole 
1,750 milliliter bottle of that at Savannah Discount for, I think it was just straight whiskey. It wasn't flavored, just straight whiskey. Felt like $9.99. I'm not joking. No, I'm not joking. I just can't buy everything. I said, why would they sell this so cheap? It would be normally $20-something, dollars, but it just sell. Savannah Discount has outrageous prices. I've tried lots of things in life I wouldn't do again, says JBD. No, Ron was defeated. Jim Beam, old tub. Yeah, uh, I can't believe it. I, I just can't believe it. He saved her. He saved her. I can't believe it. All right. Hi there, says Radar, really. Hello there. Well... I don't know what to say. I mean, I thought I had it. So it's the bellows that taste a little more off and not as quality. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Man, and then last night, what happened? I picked the bellows club whiskey over the Joe, uh, the Joe B. Yeah, the Joe B, the Kentucky Bow. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know. I'm getting off it. I got a lot of thinking to do. I got a lot of things to work out now. <laughs> I have something to do. No. Um, I don't know. Tomorrow morning, that's going to be tough. Now, Sunday morning, I'm planning to do um, Kentucky Bow versus Triple Crown. I would hope that Triple Crown would win. I mean, Triple Crown is like 20 something dollars a bottle. Of course, I got it for <laughs> ha ha ha. $3.99 for a half size bottle. So that would be like $7.98 for a bottle. That's outrageously low. You see, if you see, if you ever see uh Triple Crown, you'd be looking at $21, $22, $3 a bottle. I've only seen it west of the Mississippi River. I've never seen Triple Crown east of the Mississippi River. If you cross the Mississippi River, they have different products. I mean, even in New Orleans. that New Orleans, you know, is on both sides of the river. So if you go and cross the bridge and go to the West Bank, which is like getting into the western part of the United States, because the Mississippi River is kind of like the dividing line, right? East, US, Eastern United States, Western United States. You get different products, even different beers in some cases. It's strange. Like that river is like a just, just this dividing point. I don't know why. Yeah, in New Orleans, the radio stations on the east side of the river are W, W, R, N, O, W. S H O W W O Z. But if you cross the river, go to the West Bank, they start with K. K. K, whatever. Now there's some there's some inconsistencies there because I know of one station east of the Mississippi that's K S L U. But generally, it's west of Mississippi is K, east is W. Why? I don't know. Thanks. Oh, Kentucky Brew Review. Wait, let's see. Radar is from Kentucky Brew Reviews, and he said, yes, he is. Yeah, Terrio is awesome, says Radar. Really? Thanks. We got to stream later. Love that channel. I do love that channel, too. I always watch that stuff. I mean, if it's applicable to what I've drunk. I never watch videos for beers or wine or liquor I haven't had because I can't relate to it. If they're reviewing a beer I haven't tasted before, well, I can't talk about it. Do you guys get clear channels out there? Is it in all direct? I think there's clear channel, yeah. So we're down in New Orleans. I don't know if the Kentucky Brew Review people ever been to New Orleans. They got to go to the Mississippi River in the western edge of Kentucky and go down. <laughs> a 
know that they could take a diagonal highway, <laughs> but uh, I'm in Vermont. Vermont, the Green Mountain State, Vermont, Vert, Mont, Green, Vert, Mont, Mountain. James P. Madonna sent me some long thing in French yes, this morning. Some long thing about a talisman. He was like, can you read French? I could understand it. When I was reading it, I pretty much understood what it was saying. So I guess I could read it better than I thought I could. When I go somewhere tonight, I'm I, I'm going to see people that can speak French. But they're mostly over 70 years old, but they can speak it. Some of the older guys. Can. When I was a little kid, if you go to any bar room, like they always be talking French, you know. You say that's not germane to what your video is about. I understand that. Uh, I'm in Indiana. Which is better? Which is better? Which is what better? Okay, anyway. Uh, here, uh, I thought the Bellows was better, but actually I was drinking Kentucky Bow. So as it turns out, the conduct, the Kentucky, oh yeah, the Kentucky, all right. The Kentucky Bow was better. I don't know if the Kentucky Brew Review guys can get can get a Kentucky Bow. I don't remember them ever doing a video on that. In fact, I don't remember anybody ever doing a video on it except for me. So I think I did the first video review for Kentucky Bow in the world. Uh, so there we, hey, but that happened. So here we go. Kentucky Bow is the winner. I like the color scheme. I like that green. It's like a what color green. Is that? Is that Kelly green? Like an Irish? Like if you went to a St. Patrick's Day parade? Green with the gold. It's a nice, kind of nice looking label. But then Bellows is kind of nice too. It's like that uh, Ecro, Ecro, like kind of a linen type yellow thing. Not bad looking. WB, William Bellows. Real person too, not some made up name. Oh, well, heck, I got it wrong. No use crying over spilled whiskey. Haha, <laughs> I didn't spill it. Uh, it's getting dark. Look at it. It's getting dark. Um, so that's it. Tomorrow morning, straight bourbon whiskey. Yeah. And then Sunday morning, uh, triple crown. That'll be the last of the triple crown. I've only got enough left for one more taste challenge and it's bye-bye triple crown. Then, uh, oh, it's going to take me to the end of the month to finish up the blended American. going to take me to the end of the month. I already mapped it out. Before I came on here, I said, yep, it's going to take. Then in April, it's going to be Canadian whiskey again. Get ready for James Fox. Introduced in 1975. I bought a liter bottle, and it was only $8.99. <laughs> oh, you can't get James Fox in this town. You barely can get it in New Orleans. It's a rarity, really, but it was kind of quasi-common at one time. Reek Geeb says, I'm from Indiana. Oh, okay. I've been to Indiana Indiana many times. Dawn Busters. Yes, tomorrow morning. God willing, at uh, about 5.30 Central Time. Dawn Busters. All right. So thanks for watching this failure. Sorry. Can't win them all. Although I try hard to do it. I give it a good effort. I really do, but it doesn't work out. Always.